We've made a bit of a comeback here in the last few minutes. Allianz chief economist Mohamed El Arian pegging the downturn to a rise in yields tweeting. As feared, higher yields on U.S. government bonds have eroded what was a 2 percent bounce in stocks. Serves as a reminder that a stabilization of the Treasury market is likely to be needed to establish a sustainable floor under stocks all of which keeps the market's focus on the Fed. We'll hear more from Mohammed in just a bit when he joins us live. In the meantime, let's dig deeper into the move in bonds and the impact from the Fed. Bonds are becoming more attractive to investors like DoubleLine CEO Jeffrey Gunlock, who tweeted today that he has been a buyer of bonds, quote-unquote, recently. Joining us now is DoubleLine's deputy CIO, Jeff Sherman. Jeff, great to have you with us. Hi, Melissa. Good to see you today. Hi. In a world in which there, there was no alternative for so long, there is an alternative at this point. And so I'm, I'm wondering how you view that opportunity right now for investors. Yeah, well, I think Mohammed's quote is correct. Um, you know, all volatility runs to the bond market right now. And we've seen a very hawkish Fed. Um, not only was the Fed hawkish at the meeting last week, but they kind of out hawked themselves. And, um, you know, uh, Chairman Powell was committed to the dot plots. Uh, he's talking about they have to be forced on by inflation. And the bond market was, it really did a 180 from the interpretation that we saw back in the July meeting, where they interpreted uh, the Fed governor, uh, the Fed chairman's comments as being dovish. And so we've seen a massive repricing in the bond market, not just in the last week or so, but really since the uh, kind of a low in, local low in yields on the 1st of August. And just to put it in perspective, I mean, yields are up something like 140 basis points on 10 years. Uh, the two years up over 150 basis points. And so you're starting to get to the, the perspective of where on a forward looking basis, if you believe that the inflationary environment is on a trajectory to be contained and what is priced in the bond market, there's significant value in real yield opportunity. That is return opportunity that can outstrip inflation over the next couple of periods. And so from our perspective, we've been adding to our Treasury positions to offset some of the credit risk within our portfolios, but also just as an outright trade. Uh, the bond market is very oversold right now. If you look at relative strength indices uh, across the curve, you can see just this carnage that you've seen over the last week and a half or so. And it, it really presents a buying opportunity. And so investors like the Fed, and I, I like Mohammed's comments that the Fed is being backward looking, look at inflation. Uh, the inflation data we got is the inflation that has transpired. It's not the inflation data that we have on a forward looking basis. And so I think there is some significant opportunities out here. Yields are to levels that we have not seen both in credit markets and rates markets since back in 2011. And so there is significant opportunity out there. And I really think for investors that are timid and worried about the, the path going forward, there is a good opportunity right now in the fixed income markets to be able to put together high quality portfolios that can achieve some of their income and return objectives. Um, the the notion that U.S. Treasuries present an opportunity, I think a, a lot of investors can act, can can stomach. The idea that Europe presents an opportunity is something, Jeff, that I think a lot of investors may not be able to stomach because the rise in yields may signify something else. When you take a look at a U.K. 30-year popping above 5 percent for the first time since, what, 2011 or whatever that superlative is, that signals the fear that you're not going to be paid back later on. I mean, it, it, it's a whole other message where you have yields go higher. And so I'm wondering where you see that opportunity in Europe. Yeah, I mean, from that perspective, I think, you know, the, the U.K. still has some challenges, especially with all of the budget uh, talks over the last week or so, um, really, you know, th that they're going to try to stimulate here through tax cuts. And the market didn't want to hear that. But I think some of the pain you've seen in the rates market here in the U.S. this week, or at least, you know, yesterday and today, is some of that selling from e U.K. investors, right? Um, they, they own treasuries. They were selling them to essentially they don't care about the price they sell back because if they're unhedged, the currency move uh, way outstrips what the decline they saw on the rates market. And so from the standpoint of thinking about, you know, some of the pressure we've seen in yields here, some is because the world has been long the dollar uh, that they're trying to sell some of that to kind of protect that currency as well. So uh, really, Europe uh, doesn't really offer a significant opportunity, even at these levels right now. Uh, we'd be very cautious on that. The U.S. is the place to be. The U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, is the carry trade right now outside of the U.K., as you pointed out. And it is a high quality asset. And so for U.S. investors, uh, we think they should be remaining to focus on the U.S. Uh, bond market today.
What are you seeing then? This is the last question, Jeff. What are you seeing though in the in the credit markets? A lot of people in the on the equity side look at the credit markets to see if there's any cracks, any signs that there's stress. Um, and what I notice in the notes that you gave to our producers is that liquidity continues to be poor. It's not that there's less. We know that there's less liquidity. That's by the Fed's design. But that liquidity is actually poor. How poor is it? Is it getting worse? Yeah, it's, it's poor in terms of bid offer spread, but that's also a function of volatility. So um, bonds, you know, as there's more volatility, bid offer spread widens. But talking uh, with our desk this morning and, and talking to the credit traders, um, it still is pretty orderly in these markets. And so, yes, the bids are a little bit wider on assets out there, but there are significant bids across the credit spectrum. So from a standpoint of liquidity, it may not be the price you want, but there is liquidity in the market right now. And so the liquidity has been poor, but this is also by design. Um, and what I mean by that is the Fed is tightening policy. They're raising interest rates. We all know that. But don't forget on the back end, they're also doing quantitative tightening. And so they're removing liquidity from the system. And this shot, this shot north uh, with the dollar uh, really over the weekend or so is also exacerbating some of those challenges with liquidity right now. And so ultimately, this is kind of a really it falls into the plan of what the Fed wants in tightening conditions in general. But when we look at credit markets, they are behaved. Um, they, they may not be the price where people want that. You know, the, if you look at like the largest ETF out there uh, in investor grade corporate bonds, it's now down more than 21 percent year to date. And so some of that has to do with credit. A lot of it has to do with rates. But so far, what it really is, is just, you know, the widening we've seen in corporate spreads and across the credit markets in general is really just commensurate with the rate volatility we've seen. So it, it may not be what investors want to hear from a standpoint of looking at credit, but if you're calculated in the way you look at it and you're willing to take that risk, you know, some of these below investor grade parts of the market do look attractive. Now they have recession risk, right? So what is an investor to do? Well, you can get double digit yields out there, but you can also pair it with this trade we started with, right? We can talk about the treasury market. We can build portfolios out there to do that, to withstand some of that credit volatility. So the bond market is one of the most interesting places it's been in over a decade right now. And we, we just think that uh, investors out there that are concerned about equity markets, potentially they should look at some of these credit markets putting some of these ideas together and building yourself kind of a, a portfolio that can weather the storm that's forthcoming from the Fed over the next six to nine right. months. Jeff, thanks for your thoughts. Great to speak with you. Great to see you again, Alyssa. Thank you.